Hi guys, well let's talk today uh, on this video about a non-common topic uh, who evocate things who are beyond the only thematic of street photography. Well I want to talk about sociology and psychology. So how these two fields, how these two human sciences can help you to become a better street photographer. Or in other way, how can you take the maximum of advantage of these two disciplines to rise up your level in photography, to shoot faster and to not face problems when you go to the street? While telling this, I am mainly talking to uh, street photographers who choose to photography people very close. Well, if you are doing that kind of street photography, uh, let's say, for example, where you landscape first the architecture of the city and you include human elements in your framing, well, this video is not made for you. I'm mainly talking to people who daily like to photography people, like in a portrait, unknown people they don't know when they go to the street, you know, close up, in a close up way, photographing people very close with, let's say, with fixed lens. Well, if you're doing this kind of photography, your interest is to listen this video till the end. That was the introduction to the subject. Let, let's come now to the essential. So guys, yeah, one of the keys to succeed nowadays in your street photography is to know the world where you are living. The globalization process has changed many things in habits of people and mentality. Uh, world has become more standard. Not just in your, this fact. Uh, one of the reactions that observed on people that like people adopt to how to say to protect themselves from let's say the negative effects of globalization who in kind of a reaction they invented some borders mental borders psycho psycho borders like for protect themselves in reaction to this world uh, who is running so fast around them that's one of the reasons why people are more afraid to idea to lose control of their images you know it's much more easy to let yourself be photographed by people you know by your family uh, than by uh, somebody you don't know but the globalization is not the only factor uh, who is changing the world nowadays. The second factor, the second important factor, I would say, is the, the science and the technique, you know. Uh, the technique nowadays, technical objects uh, are, ch are changing our way of behavior, our way of consuming, uh, and they putting uh, a distance between people, you know. So, some something who is who was destined to to help people like mobiles for example to help people to communicate easier uh well at the end it's lead people to to how to say to to ignore each other the, 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 the radical example you see you can see it in japan for example or korea or so or south korea if you go to the subway there in tokyo or in seoul you will see everybody with the with his iphone in his world uh watching his serial watching his 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 social media accounts but nobody is talking to the person who's sitting next to him well these two big factors globalization and technique are changing radically the the world and pushing it to be standards to go uh in the same direction um, but we see like two tendencies, you know, in the world nowadays. Like there is some countries who completely accepted this. You, you can see how Japan, a country like a Japan, for example, had uh, uh, economically succeeded, uh, taking in consideration, you know, just the knowledge and the science and the technique. Uh, comparing it to another, they they have invested a lot on it, you know because uh, people assimilate this you know easily uh, than in other parts of the world 
uh, the second tendency is we observe like there is some kind of people for different reasons well we can explain them or try to explain them you know it can be ethical it can be a uh, cult cultural uh, a religious you know have adopted the opposite reaction uh, and are still resisting or seeing the technique and the globalization like something which is not completely a positive you know so that these people have built kind of a mental borders uh, to protect themselves uh, and we can see in it uh, how to say in when you do when we do we do photography you know photographing in uh, in uh, in in asia is not the same like photographing in in europe or in africa or in islamic countries uh, i've been to hong kong not long time ago and uh, and there I've, I've, i was surprised at how i could easily shoot uh, very close to people I even <laughs> used one lens I, I, I was using before just for landscapes but I try I, I, I've used 24 millimeters for being a very very close to people and and I, I have seen how people doesn't care about it you know Hong Kong it's an island uh, uh, so the for a question of a small space uh, people have uh, don't complain about the, the the small space they have. Everybody have, uh, so you will never be invasive or intrusive <laughs> shooting people close to the face, you know, because people get used to to not have a lot of space on this island. So they they completely go on and doesn't notify what you're doing. Uh, but if you do this in 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 Islamic countries, for example, uh, with a camera, uh, well, I was using you know a, a, a DSLR camera, a very big one, a reflex camera. If you do it with visible camera in Islamic countries, you can face many many problems um, because people would would ask you why are you shooting, why are you stealing my picture, why are you shooting my wife, why are you shooting my children? Are you kind of pervert? You know, they will go immediately to a negative perception of your of you. So. Why what I want to say about it is like there is a big difference from country to country to another one. These two factors I've mentioned it before influenced people in a different way. So it came to at the end to talk about a geography of street photography. There is a list of countries where you can you can shoot very easily, and there is some countries where it's much more different and difficult to do it. So you cannot just ignore this question and. And just come to 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 any country and uh, and adopt the same strategy. Uh, that will lead you to uh, to troubles, you know. Well, the situation of France is also relevant, and it's a good example uh, to study. Uh, you know, France 40, 50 years before it was exclusive, uh, mostly a European country. Uh, for different reason, uh, France uh, took um, the strategy of immigration. Uh, uh, and uh, nowadays we have different different ethnies, different kind of people living in France, you know. And from in a city like a Paris, from neighborhood to another one, uh, mentality changed. Uh, so if you're doing street photography in, in Paris, because I have receiving some some messages in inst on Instagram from some people uh, uh, who came like a tourist to Paris and they said and uh, asking me how you. How you can get such close p picture from people? I was in Paris, and uh, I faced the troubles. I couldn't photography like I want. Uh, I had, uh, I had even a fight. Uh, yeah, some of them asking, yeah, a situation like like uh, describing situation happened to them. Uh, my answer is like it's simple. It's like I know Paris very well. I've been living here more than twenty years now, so I know exactly in which area i should photography in relaxed way and which er, which neighborhood i should be be more careful or 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 take in consideration some other elements and here we come to talk about psychology for example or sociology uh, i've been reading newspapers you know uh, and following this uh, uh, this uh, some events you know uh, and and i i've 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 seen these last years uh, many photographers uh, get physically attacked attacked uh, 
because uh, they was in the wrong place and or they adopted the wrong strategy. Uh, sometimes it can go even far away. We have a famous example of uh, one uh, photographer uh, in 2010, I think, who died because uh, the guy was shooting in a complicated neighborhood uh, and with his big camera targeting uh, young guys who were just sitting there. So the guys come to him and ask him, why are why you are shooting us? By the way, the guys, they were, they were drug dealers. And the guy answered, I am a cop. Can you imagine? You cannot pretend to be an expert or a really professional photographer if you don't know nowadays some elements, some basics of uh, of emotional intelligence who can save your life in some situation who, who can help you to avoid conflicts to not come to some complicated situations we have another example of a guy who was walking with his wife in another complicated uh, neighborhood of paris uh, the guy is european you know white white guy uh, who shot uh, a covered woman wearing niqab uh, niqab is the Islamic dress. Let only the eyes. You can see only the eyes of the girl, uh, and all parts of other parts of bar of of the body are covered. So the guy is the guy. The photographer in his mentality said like, "Oh, the woman is even covered, so nobody can recognize her. So I'm gonna take my picture, and that's all." Uh, but he did. He didn't took in consideration, you know, the psychology of this girl, and the religion. Uh, and the the husband of this woman, uh, or 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 somebody know her, or some some or or, or some some member of her family, uh, saw the guy taking the picture and went to him directly and beated him, uh, trying to break his camera. Well, the guy was injured in his arms, you know. Uh, he was stopped from working for 45 days. Well, the situation went till the court. It was, yeah. Uh, just to, to tell you, like, some, sometimes when, when you don't take in consideration these basics who are very important nowadays, you can face these kind of situations. I'm not telling you this to scare you or something. Uh, keep doing street photography, which is nice discipline. But please, guys... Take in consideration uh, the psychology and the sociology. Uh, I, I I cannot give you example of, of of techniques you can you can you can manage to learn, because uh, the 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 format of the video doesn't allow this. But for those who 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 booked one of my workshops in Paris, uh, level three knows what I'm talking about or what I want to talk about so yeah hope that was a short video hope you enjoyed it if you like it you can you can share it uh, you can also follow my channel uh, to to get before the other ones the next videos I'm gonna publish uh, take care guys see you soon bye